Hi honeys, my name is Michelle Escalin. In today's video, I'm going to talk to you about a book that I just read. The book is called The Existence of Amy and it's by Lana Grace Riva. Miss Riva asked me if she sent me a copy of this book, would I be willing to do a review on it? And absolutely the answer was yes. I just have two rules when it comes to doing book reviews. One, I want to be able to be honest about what I think. And two, I want an actual paper copy of the book. I don't do PDFs or um, digital copies or anything like that. They just mess with my eyes too much. So this is the only way that I will do it. Um, and as you see here, I've done some annotating and it's just something I like to do, especially if it's a book that I'm doing a review on. I want to make sure that I do a good thorough review. This book is about a lady named Amy. Amy has a good job. She's got a nice apartment and she also is suffering from, they don't really give a diagnosis, but some sort of anxiety, OCD, depression, but she struggles with it a lot. Like whatever she has seems to be pretty severe, but she's still somewhat high functioning on the days that she's able to go to work. So right off the bat, the author starts delving into the anxiety that Amy goes through, and I can really relate to that. I think most of us can, on some level, relate to anxiety. And I like that she goes into that first and then kind of starts going into the OCD with it and then the depression. It's just a nice transition from one to the other. One thing I found really fascinating about this book is that the main character, I don't know if she's noticed, but the main character seems to get through her anxiety much better when other people are helping guide her through it. And I found that to be true with my own anxiety. I suffer from um, a lot of anxiety. I have PTSD and I found that other people can calm me down and get me out of a panic attack way faster than I can myself. We really do need other people if we're going to get through anxiety. I hate to say that because I know a lot of people that struggle with anxiety just want to be alone all the time. I understand that, but we need other people. When I was a child, my parents got a divorce. No shock there. A lot of people went through that. But one thing I found was that when anybody in elementary school or middle school, when their parents would announce that they were getting a divorce, usually they would take them to some kind of therapy. And when that happened, nine times out of 10, the therapist would have said child read, are you there, God? It's me, Margaret. So for me, this book became kind of a, the book that every child whose parents got divorced had to read. With that in mind, I think this should be the book that everybody that suffers with anxiety, OCD, depression should read. And anybody who loves somebody who is going through these kind of uh, mental issues, maybe you should read it too. The reason I think you should read it if you're going through these um, difficulties is that it can help you look at what you're going through in someone else's eyes through a different person. It can help you feel like you're not alone and like you're not crazy. Like other people go through the same things when they're having these issues. And if you have somebody that you care about and you're trying to help who's going through these kind of issues, it's good because it explains what you can do, how you can help. It also explains for both people, whether you're going through it or somebody else's, the importance of therapy and the fact that medication really can be important at times. Did you want to get up? There you go. <laughs> Zelda wanted to join the video. She read a lot of the book with me, so I could see why she'd want to be here. Um, but she's getting a little older. She has a bit of a hard time jumping sometimes, so I have to help her up here. But thank you for joining, Zelda. We appreciate it. We appreciate it. Yeah. 
What made me so sad when I was reading this was that Amy knew she needed help. She knew something was wrong, but she didn't think that she deserved to get help. And I think that's very common, but it doesn't make it any less sad either. This book is a really good reminder that if you see somebody struggling, it's really not a bad idea to help them because sometimes people can't or won't help themselves. If you've never struggled with mental illness, read this book. It will help you understand what it feels like because I'm telling you, it's not fun and it feels You can feel really out, really out of control and really like there's something wrong with you and nobody else understands. So I do really think that this is a valuable book. And I couldn't help but wonder multiple times, is this an autobiography of some sort for Miss Reva or does she have a family member who has struggled with mental illness? I'm not sure, but it did say it was a fiction novel, but I still wonder. Mm -hmm. Now the downside to this, um, I do wish it had been edited at least one more time because there was some spelling and grammatical issues in the book. There's really not much in the way of character development in here. And I still have no idea where the book took place. I don't know what country it was in or anything. And I really like having that knowledge when I read books. So it was kind of disappointing. But then I was compelled to wonder, does the author want me as a reader to feel like the other characters in the book really aren't important and the who they are isn't important and where they are isn't important? Like, did, did, did she want me to feel as dazed and confused as Amy felt? If that's the case, then she did a good job. But if she didn't want me to feel that way, um, that would be my critique is, is to maybe do a little bit more in the way of character development and um, time and place development. I just feel like if I know a book takes place in the 90s and there's Nirvana references and 90210s on the TV in the background, I'm going to feel a little bit more about the book and about the, the situation than if I don't have that knowledge or if I know a character's last name and just different little things about their lives, I'm going to feel a little bit more invested in them and care a little bit more about what happens to them. I guess that's part of why the character development bothered me. I had a harder time caring about the characters. And I felt like some of the characters when the book was over, I wondered why they were even introduced. It just felt like there were a few times where this character is going to show up. We'll mention them and then we'll never mention them again. I don't know why they were there to begin with kind of thing, but I still think everybody should read it. <laughs> I still think it's a really good, valuable book. I think it's very important to understand mental illness as much as we can, because so many people struggle with it. So this is The Existence of Amy by Lana Grace Riva. Have you read this book? If you have, let me know what you thought. If you haven't read it, would you like to read it? Do you want to understand what it's like to have mental illness or how to help those who do? Or if you have mental illness, do you want to understand what you're going through a little bit more? Just let me know. I'd love to hear your input. You have a great rest of your day. I love you. Bye. Are you going to say bye, Zelda? You going to say bye? You say bye over there? Zelda does not say goodbye. <laughs> Crazy girl.